the hot countries, certainly the five star, four star hotels and the tourist type restaurants are all going to have air conditioning. And so the temperatures are probably cooler in their kitchens than in the UK, which is cooler. And it's very cool here today. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the new series, Highfield Bite Size. It's with me, Sterling Crew, and with Richard Sprenger. And I'll be talking to Richard about some of the key food safety issues that are going around at the minute to increase our understanding. So, Richard, we kick off with one of the things that's really close to your heart, which is the uh, temperature control, the danger zone. So perhaps you could describe um, what does a danger zone mean to you? The danger zone has been with us for years and generally speaking, the uh, danger zone is the zone of considered to be the zone of temperature that allows bacteria to multiply. That's what most people consider it to be or the zone of temperature that where bacteria multiply rapidly, pathogenic bacteria. OK, which is so um, does that answer change depending on what country you're in? So if we had to be in America now, would you give me a different answer than if you're in the UK or Dubai where you are? That's the problem. You see, the danger zone is not scientific because it varies in different countries. And remember, the bacteria don't vary. The pathogens, salmonella and so on, they're not varying, but different countries have different danger zones. So America has five degrees to 57 degrees centigrade. Whereas in the UK, uh, we have eight degrees to 63 degrees centigrade. And the other problem is that actually the scientific zone of multiplication is arguably minus two degrees centigrade for listeria up to 55 degrees centigrade for B Bacillus cereus. The rapid multiplication, the real danger zone, I would say was 20 to 50 degrees centigrade. So then what does that leave us when we're talking and everybody talks about the danger zone? It's really something that's in legislation. I prefer to call it the risk zone, because if you store food within that zone, there's a risk of prosecution and there's a risk that some pathogens may multiply. But basically, we're talking about the same type of temperature, isn't it? I wonder the significance of it's one degree or off or on. The important thing is that people observe it, isn't it? So we know that there are zones that we must keep the hot food out. Top tip then for if you're in a catering establishment and you want to make sure that your food is at the right temperature. So what type of thing should you be thinking about in that kitchen to make sure your food is outside that danger zone? Well, it's two things. One is obviously the temperature. The other is the time. And, and you need to ensure that the food is out of refrigeration for as short a time as possible. And if it's obviously if you're preparing the food, prepare it as quickly as possible, especially if you haven't got air conditioning in your kitchen or your food production area and the temperatures can be quite high, especially in some countries. Because uh, I so, see that uh, some people who have very, very large kitchens actually have blast chillers, don't they, to accelerate that cooling. But that's not available to lots of smaller operations. But it's a great investment, isn't it, to make sure that you are chilling your food, especially in hot countries. Yes, uh, and, and it's uh, I agree that if you are continually cooling food, then really you should invest in a blast chiller if you're doing it every so often. There are ways that you can cool food rapidly uh, within many countries. The other thing to remember, although the countries are hot, the major problem with them is delivery, transport, leaving food outside for obviously a significant period of time. Inside the hot countries, certainly the five star, four star hotels and the tourist type restaurants are all going to have air conditioning. And so the temperatures are probably cooler in their kitchens than in the UK, which is cooler. And it's very cool here today. Exactly. But the message I picked up there, Richard, it's about the complete supply chain, isn't it? It's not just it is. the kitchen. It's making sure that if you have any food that is at risk, it should be chilled throughout the supply chain. So, Richard, exactly. I'm thinking what's the most important thing? I suppose what I don't like to see in kitchens is the absence of a thermometer. Isn't it? Because sometimes you go into a kitchen and still say, oh, can I just see your thermometer? Uh, how do you know it's taking the right temperature? I still find quite a few people that don't have thermometers. It's critical. I even have one in my home kitchen here, Richard. Yes, I am really disappointed that uh, there's not a legal requirement for all 
kitchens, all food businesses that are preparing high risk food to mandatory have accurate thermometers and um, also to use them regularly and properly. And that obviously requires training. Unfortunately, that's not a requirement. And um, we've taken the view in, in the UK that many catering establishments don't have them and don't know how to use them and don't know how to use them. I think that's entirely wrong, it's an entirely wrong approach. You cannot use organoleptic methods safely to determine, for example, whether something's cooked or whether it's cooled to the right temperature. It's just not possible. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Richard, for your insights. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.